What's going on guys? It's me Liquid Truth and welcome back to our Disco Elysium Let's Play. Uh, we are about ready to go meet the smoking guy on the balcony. So things are about to start popping off pretty soon. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you guys so, so much for taking time out of your day to watch my content. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's the only way small channels like me are ever going to get found. And... Let's do this. So we can't talk to these jerks. I also need to play um, Kim at Suzerain again, because I want to win. That's some bullshit. He got lucky. We didn't fully understand the rules. We checked this. We need to go pick our dice up later. Can we talk to her? Hey, where are you? Let me talk to you. What up, Maine? Oh, look. It's the cop who turned me into a bad person. All right, I forgot about that. Sorry about that, dude. Uh, I don't want to talk to you. You're going to just make me feel bad. What time do we meet that man on the balcony? 21 o'clock? 2100, whatever? Yep. Okay. We are going to go near the balcony, and we're going to play another game of Suzeranity. Kim got lucky. I don't think we checked the rest of these. This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? Let's ask him. What's a tourist attraction doing here? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. What happened? They got as far as the street lamps and that statue on the intersection before something went sour. I suspect it was Evar's class doing. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. Can we do something about it? We should have done something about the Union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. There. Let's go ahead and take a look. Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk. The ring of metal. Pull the handle and look inside. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry, different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab gray shape, like a ghost. Turn the knob to focus your vision. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible, a half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Kim, there's ruins of some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it up. Lieutenant takes off his glasses and cleans them. Is that it? Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it up. Okay. What's the difference with this one? This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Vandalism, shaking your head. Probably some kids. The lieutenant inspects the rigged slot. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. Look inside anyway. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word ONUK written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. <laughs> Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts. 
lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonesis, or the Cairo, the central symbol of the Perikonesian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach, and a small tent set up on the ice. All right. Man, I can't wait to have more money. Also, tomorrow we get to go across the uh, the bridge because they fixed the bridge. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to go to sleep after we talk to this man. So let's get in this little alleyway, this little opening right here. I'm about to fuck you up, Kim. Let's go. Thought you were popping off, homie. Let's see it. Let me read the instructions again. The suzerainty box is heavy and slightly awkward in your hands. You give it a light shake and feel the pieces shift around inside. We're gonna whoop his ass. Read the rule book. He embarrassed us last time. Not this time. Welcome to suzerainty, a game of economic strategy for the whole family. The rule book is sumptuously illustrated and thick as a Guardian novel. Mm, economic strategy, more like rapacious plunder and exploitation. Sure. The colorful illustrations depict cheerful workers picking apricots, hauling marble sculptures out of crumbling temples, and harvesting a strange magenta-leafed plant. Everyone is smiling. You begin to suspect there may be a political agenda to this so-called family game. The instructions are opaque at first and introduce many concepts you're not familiar with. Fortunately, there are many diagrams and examples throughout. All right, we gotta pay attention. You soon figure out the basic conceit. Each player represents an administrator for the suzerain of Revachon. Your objective is to increase the suzerain's wealth and renown by accumulating victory points. And we do that how? That's where the suzerain's vassals come in. The game features four vassal nations, each one home to an economically important resource. Each turn, the player collects resources from vassals where they've placed workers. They may then rearrange their workers, fulfill contracts for coin and bonuses, or build structures back in Revachon. Okay, okay, okay. Each turn, the player collects resources and vassals where they've Placed workers. They may then rearrange their workers to fulfill contracts for coin and bonuses or build structures back in Revachol. So the workers can fulfill contracts for coin and bonuses or build structures. As you leaf through the pages, your eye catches on a sidebar labeled Advice for Beginners. We know the advice for beginners. It's like to stick to a strategy and follow it through. So we need to make sure workers can fulfill contracts or build structures. We need to make sure we don't pick something <laughs> where Kim's like, you can't do that. All right, so how's the winner determined? The actual scoring system appears infinitely complex with a series of tables and appendices required to compute each player's final victory point total. You skip that part for now. You open up a number of pouches containing wooden tokens. There are also each card. What? You are not going to offer to let me punch any of them out? You hold the open game box. What? Can I not play? Kim, play with me. Yes. What? Can we not play it? Guess not. What else do we have? The envelope, we checked that out. Did we take a better look at our ledger? Oh, one thing I wanted to finally do, since we have enough health and moral points, is finally, and we know who we are, I wanna see, I've never did this in my last playthrough. I've never been this far in the game at this point. 
I want to see if we can finally, like, discover ourselves without having some sort of existential crisis where we think we're some sort of drug-addled pirate or some shit. Like the thing where you uh, clean off the mirror and look. Because we still haven't done that. So we're just passing time. They're not going to let me play suzerainty with fucking Kim. What the hell, dude? The door is still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. Shut up, Kim. No time for your... Yo. I got distracted. What was I coming up? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what did I come up here for? What the fuck? I'm, I've been huffing that... uh Whatever, Nosafed or whatever the drugs are. All right, Kim. Uh, take it easy, Kim. I might have a crisis here. A mirror hangs on the wall, covered in steam. You cannot see yourself, just the outlines of a man. You have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. We're going to wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Uh-oh. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Mm, maybe I should touch my face first. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. How bad could it be? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Still? We're gonna just wipe the mirror. Behold. Yikes, that's not what I wanted to see. Jesus Christ, we look fucking terrifying. Oh no. That's not what I wanted at all. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making the face, it's... The face is making itself. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Okay. Try to stop. Oh my god. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. This is a terrifying picture down here. I hate this picture. I regret doing this. I didn't want this picture. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Hmm. It's an expression of pain. You are correct. Okay. So we can try to dig deep into our mind to locate the source of the expression, or using electrochemistry, attempt to stop the expression from happening. Or, through interfacing, Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet from fogging up the mirror. Minus 10 for no tool in hand. Well, we're definitely going to do this. We'll be back. Jesus fucking Christ, this is a disgusting image. So we'll do that. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it. Your face adorned with the expression. I'm so glad they didn't make us have to do all those things again. Uh, so let's give this a try. The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Well, we failed that check. Uh... 
fuck. We had an item that boosts our interfacing. We need to see if we have any more. I don't think so. It's not a physical instrument check. We'll see if they'll let us do it again or if they're really going to make us just put a point in it. Wall. In it. You have to put a point in interfacing. Can we do... Damn it. All right. What is the first check? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Encyclopedia. Let's see if we can do anything to boost that. I doubt it. Maybe like a drug that we don't have because we don't have access to it yet. As long as nothing gives us minus encyclopedia, we'll go ahead and give it a try because we can try both of those things at another date. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. All right, we're going to dig deep into our mind to locate the source of the expression. It belongs yes. in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. If it doesn't oh, shit. Rhyme, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. You're not pronouncing it right. Yamais le million. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air, what de nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane Guillaume. appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. Oh, okay, so that's it rhyming. Guillaume Le Million. Or Guillaume <laughs> Le Million. Uh, and so I adopted this shitty expression. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. Mm, how long ago was the new wave? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you, or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Well, I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. So we can try the interfacing again eventually. What is this thought? He says, hi, we didn't look into that one. Actual art degree, minus one to perception. Can't even look at this shit. Jam rock shuffle. I'm cool with doing this to get rid of the Esprit de Corpse, because that's like a cop skill. Guillaume Le Million. Minus one logic. Whatever happened to Guillaume? There's amber mane and sparkling tea beguiled the tattered remains of the nation while you suffered and suffered. Did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit 
Watt de Nuit 20 years ago. Spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revishal West. Hmm. So we'd have to get rid of one of these. How do we unlock these? I don't want to forget. We can't even do that. So yeah, we can't. All right. Well, I guess we don't have the option to do anything. Let's have this disgusting picture of me now. Jesus Christ. Kim, we need some speed or something. Look like a fucking mess. Wait. I don't think... Yeah, we can't get anything from here. Kim, let me play you at this game. Stop being a bitch. The suzerainty box is heavy and slightly awkward in your- Maybe they'll let us play it again tomorrow. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. Look through the ledger. The ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Let's... Yeah, we just briefly looked at it. Let's go ahead and inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Go ahead and run our fingers across the aluminum. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Ooh. Looks like an official mark, made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. Hey, Lieutenant? What is this? What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Ooh. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. We still don't know our full address though, right? So how can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. What? For example... All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Let's go. This means you can read the watermarks. If you just turn the lights on. Thank you, Cam. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Arson, petty theft, spousal abuse. Oh, my bad. I clipped across the case files. Dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files. Commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Revachon. Precinct 41. Jamrock Quarter. That's it? The notebook is annual. It says 51 on what remains of its cover. A molten strap of cardboard. Everything prior to this must have belonged to a previous volume. In short, there was more. Is two cases a week good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it. Lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I burned out all right. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. He nods, turning back to his own case files. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. And there was mention of a naming convention. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. 
Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. And this is like how I title my YouTube videos. Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Uka parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, all my cases employ a naming convention similar to what we used on ours. Yes, how very childish of you. In your and my defense, almost everyone in the RCM uses the titular system, in addition to the official alphanumeric. And why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a case named the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. Jesus. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. Jesus. He it was a workplace accident. Jesus, Kim. Uh, close the case files. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. Ooh. They're a little further from your nose now. Logic 11. Let's read the case files. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always Shit, begins with HDB 41. Then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB 41120-11700, the next world mural. Wait, HBD 41, weren't those officer precinct? Why yes, your precinct number is 41. And HDB? Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. Harry Dubois, HDB. The ne what? What are we doing here? It's the next world mural. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Oh, we're looking at different Overnight ones. on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking Central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Coudon. Cause of failure, rent too high. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible only in the next world. For new people, it is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. 
So it was rich graffiti artist, like terrorizing the middle class. Do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. So it's a couple kissing and true love is possible only in the next world for new people. It is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. And then it was some rich dude. Yeah, remove them. Mm. But I don't like the idea of like. I don't know. Just being like, no, only have our ideas. Freedom of speech only if it's my ideas. Because it's not hate speech. It's just stupid. But I'm, it's not right. So remove the mural, it's wrong. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. And it is too late for us. Um, all that remains is to wreak havoc on the middle class. No, the middle class are not to be blamed. It's human nature. I don't know. I like it, but we can't wreak havoc. But can't we wreak havoc on other nations instead? What the hell kind of colonial take is that? I must have voted and possibly even lobbied to remove the thing because I don't believe in that rubbish one bit. No one cares what you believe in, man with the smelly toilet ledger. What do you want to tackle next? Or are we done? Fucking love that. Like, who are, who are you preaching to for, <laughs> for uh, moral points? You're holding a ledger you pulled out of the trash. Like, go fuck yourself. Just keep reading. <laughs> so, like, I fucking love that. No one cares what you believe in, dude. Just keep reading your shit. Okay. Mmm... The unsolvable case. A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer and indeed most civilians in Jamrock know it's unsolvable. I love a challenge. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. Public indecency is not punishable by incarceration? The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. Damn, why do I get fucking attacked in this? Couldn't we just keep them off the streets? You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? <laughs> no, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition, because that's where the action is. Can you keep yourself off the streets? Fair. Threatening fines, dragging them to the station, locking them up in the hell holes they live in, locking them up in the station, 
hypnotherapy, even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Bert and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all, and still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. So the Zemiaki's fucking sent me up? It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? I think Leslie's the one that pulls his dick out? Yeah, Leslie takes his pants off. Public indecency. Good, you're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day, when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face. Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. Jesus. No. Harry, no. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry, reports Leslie, who, at this point, is tending to Burke. Jesus, with his dick out? He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. Jesus. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? <laughs> but both drunks are off the street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Jesus Christ. We'll read these at another time, because it's now at least 2100. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. Read the watermarks? Okay. Come on, Kim, let's go. We got a meeting with a man. The man on a balcony. Before we do that, we will check our stuff real quick in the headlights. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. Whatever, Kim. I'm pushing engine start. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canadian comes to life with a whiny growl. Oh, bitch, that was loud. Like a leopard waking from its sleep, yawning and roaring at the same time. Press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with nice. a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Where are we on this? 
Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, finger near the top of the map on a segment of coast just cutting or jetting out of the, uh, uh, what the fuck? On a segment of coast jetting out into the great ocean. I'm sure I've seen worse. Oh, yes. Coal City. Le Royaume. The Burnt Out Quarter. What about the perforations? There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. I don't know what that means. Not bad. Not bad for what? You don't even know what it means yet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This, this game is fucking funny. <laughs> All right. What about the next one? My bad. I, I pointed it out. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border and then some. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. Not bad for what? You, you're just lying to yourself to feel like you're smart. And it's even funnier because like the idea of playing this alone and uh, like, cause of course most people, you play video games alone and not like most people aren't streaming or like uploading a video. So you're not going to be talking. You would most likely be choosing this under the guise of a single player, like no stream, no anything, just sitting there solitary by yourself. You'd be choosing this in this video game to be like, okay, I know this would give me ideally in the context of a CRPG game, choosing this would allude to that. I know the more information, maybe it'll give me a better prompt, but then the game's like, nah, bitch, you think you're slick. You don't know what the hell that is. <clears throat> That's very funny. Okay. The next line is the longest. It runs all the way around the border and then some count them individually. There are so many. It's hard to count more than 150, at least maybe even 200. What about the last row? The last row has three perforations. As you look at them, you feel your index finger reflexively contract three times. Seems like something I've done before. And something you'll do again before this is all over. Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Uh-oh. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Ah. Uh... Walked around the land telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Uh. Like I just went around apologizing all the time. Got drunk like a megastar. Yes, that does seem quite likely. Your youth coincided with some heady days for Revachol. But let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. Uh oh. Wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. So I used to be good. That's some solace, I guess. What's the last number? You know the answer already. The tingle in your index finger gave it away. Oh, no. Those are my confirmed kills? Three of them? That's right. How did you know? I felt a twitch in my index finger. Ah, right. Sometimes the brain's able to preserve certain responses even when conscious memory has been, let's say, misplaced. For an RCM officer, 
especially Pristine 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. That's tame. Jesus Christ. That's why, yeah, these cops suck, dude. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. He says, declining to elaborate. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Kim, don't judge me. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Ah, Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the yellow gloves. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe I should pour one out for the boys? The fallen? <sighs> all right, all right. You're right. Let's go. If you want to pour out the booze you've been carrying around on duty, I'm certainly not going to stop you. Actually, I'm gonna hold on to this. As you will. Thank you, Kim. The lieutenant nods. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. You can now see your statistics on your journal page, to the right of the task description. Oh, shit. Three superstar cop, three sorry cop, one boring cop, cop. One, <laughs> these stats are so funny. 12, 16 communist. Damn, we're just going ultra communist run. Damn, that's so fucking funny. People kill, Jesus, I don't like that. Honor, good cop, bad cop, nine. <laughs> Slightly moralist. 16 communist, zero fascist. Let's go, fuck you fascists. Get wrecked, bitch. Fascist scum. All right, let's go peep this apartment building. <laughs> Ultra communist run. How many games can you play where you can go like, hey, did you do the anti-cop fascist run? Where you're like, what? What are you talking? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are these words you're saying? Did you do the anti-bigot, communist, Zionist run? Times two. Wait, do we go this way or do we go the other way? Fuck, I got distracted. You guys got me talking stupid. Balcony. <gasps> nice. Hey, what up, bro? Broski, let's get some zoom in action. John Dummery, you found me. Young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. We got your hint. Found the key right under the stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me. Are you here to make things right again? Uh... I'm not sure what he's aiming at. He's hoping to talk to a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks the murder scene. Then I have some good news for you. His eyes narrow. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. He nods towards door number 28. Uh... Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Well, I want to talk to you. Wait. What's with the skyline thing? By the way, I'm really digging the view here. 
point to the city skyline. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. He looks My away. This is special, isn't it? Oh. He looks away, his cigarette end glowing in the dark. Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? Uh, Lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. Very well. I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have a lot of questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. Run where? To the city. He gestures. <laughs> he gestures idly toward the distant motorway. Only if you promise we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. Uh oh. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, alright? Got fucking played. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? Who knows, detective? It's a mystery, he says, turning his face away from you. There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Are we trying to say he's gay? Different, of course. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Some, <laughs> he smells so good. Why on earth does he smell so good? He smells good. Lieutenant squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. That's weird, right? He smells good, and that's weird. He's barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. Ah. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. Damn it! Oh man, we're gonna have some fun. So that guy's clearly gay. <laughs> Kim, Kim's like, what? That's funny. Or you, <laughs> you find it weird? He smells good to you? Do we bump our interfacing? Master machine, pick locks. Can we do... Oh, that is how you can spend points. Uh... Empathy towards Kim Kitsuragi? Insulidian Civil Wars. Hmm. I want to keep the Mazovian socioeconomics. Bonuses from the thought. All endurance white checked. White checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. I don't think we need that anymore. But we wouldn't gain anything from these, except empathy for Kim would be nice. Learning cap for perception raised to five. Damn, we're at seven. Uh, We'll play it safe get another point in interfacing since that's what they asked us to do in the hotel and now we go inside here what 
quarterly business magazine. Dishes soaked up in a pot. An empty ashtray. Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures at local universities. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air. What is this? Party dragon silk robe? Nice. An old photo of the same apartment, dated 01. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspaper. Exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Samarin conical hat. This seems problematic. Why does he have these? Why does he have these two items? Thank God you can't see people's reactions when they see you're strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. <laughs> what? Yeah, why does he have this? The sleazy, silky bathing robe in vibrant blue features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Seal. The real Sealites probably don't care. Why does he have these in his house? Put that back on. Take that off. Or somebody sees you in that. Uh, we're better with that. I'd rather have our reaction speed high, but it doesn't look like we have the choice. What is Save Fair? Stun with Panache. Yeah, we'll leave our stuff like this for now. What up? You're who we're here to talk to? What do you know? Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What's a drag? He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Uh... Yeah, what's up with the hat? We'll get to that right after you tell me the story behind the black Samaran hat. I got it from the head of the Samaran delegation on my trip to Lomantang. It's made from a special charcoal-colored bamboo. It's an emblem of the formal normalization of our diplomatic relations. He's alluding to the decade-long war of independence while deftly brushing aside the complex causes behind the conflict. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. So you actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Hmm. Turn to Lieutenant. This is just the break we've been looking for. Don't do that. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Easy, Detective. No need to jump to conclusions. <laughs> he eyes the spectacled man near the window, who smiles and spreads his hands. Start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. 
He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Well done, detective. The thing just scared me. I think it was an achievement. Yeah, that scared the shit out of me. Sounds like the victim was unconscious. Um... So who were they? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses, looking for the right wording. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. And so how many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Were any of them huge? Like, 200 kilograms huge? That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell, I went back inside. Whoops. What happened next? Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Were they men? Women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Hmm. But we are fairly certain the lady driver was present. Lieutenant flips through his notes. Are you sure at least one of them wasn't a woman? It's possible, officer. But I cannot say with certainty. It was very dark, you must remember. And what ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. And what happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean, nothing happened? They lynched a guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. And why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villodroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCM. And so, what's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. So, you're a bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I am a commissioner from Sur La Clé, working for the Institute of Price Stability. He glances at his watch. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God. It's impossible to understand whether someone from the moral intern is joking or not. Mm, so what are you doing here, in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. 
It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Hmm. Enough business talk. Whatever you wish, officer. Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Mm, how did you two become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Peninsula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. What are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21 and it's been pending ever since. What is this EPIS thing you keep talking about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. God, yes. Sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality and commerce. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral intern feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. And what's on the next level? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachol? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. Well, Revachol going to be, or is Revachol going to be part of the EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Damn, severe thunderstorm warning just went off. Let's go. Except that candidate members never become full members, do they? Didn't you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. And so, what are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. What view? It's dark outside. Listen. He says, raising his hand. The baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Somebody's baby's crying. No, listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. He knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in darkened glass. I'm asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words. You still haven't told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Yeah, but what's his name, dude? 
Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. All right. I'm all ears, officer. A moment, officer. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once we leave. And why is that? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Ah. I'm not going anywhere. I want to have a look around this apartment. Sure. Go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know. Let me know if you have further questions, whatever. Uh hmm. None of this is weird. <laughs> All right, dude. Politicians, bureaucrats hooking up in the middle of the night. Do your thing. We're not going to blast you. I want to talk to Kim or something. Kim. Yes. What? Do we not have anything new? Just interviewed that man and we have no progress. We got no new missions. All right. So we'll go to sleep and we'll start in the morning. And then the water lock is opened, so we really get us explore the city. Oh my god, I'm hyped. That girl on the balcony still? Hey, talk to me. Damn it. Pretty girl upstairs. We go to bed yet? See you in the morning. Yep. Night, night time. Oh, and we put a point in interfacing. So let's see if we can try this again. Put the gloves on this time so we have extra, extra bonus. Make sure we have no... Cool, nothing that takes points away. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it. Your face adorned with the expression. So we can use the chain cutters. We have a 72% chance this time. The chain cutters. Oh my god, we still failed. You attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Dude, we put points in interfacing and we still failed. A 72% check. That's ridiculous. What the fuck? Can we not call that guy to come fix the the sink? We pay for this room. The bed is still cold from the broken window and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. Let's go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. Here we are again, my oh, broken bird. The waves are coming, Scared me. carrying you away. But you can't go. No, 
You have to stay always half aware of yourself. This makes me scared of like death, like imagining it like this. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot because of the pain. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. Ew. This scares me a lot. I don't like this. But this suffering, it must have some kind of meaning. A story that will come out of it. Perhaps even a story that you will write yourself. I think I'm in need of medical attention. Oh yes. They'll check you out. Give you some pills. Make it all okay. The Wonder Makers. Don't be stupid, Harry. It's not happening. They don't make new kidneys and livers Ew, in hospital. Ew, I don't hospital. like this. This is scary. All you've got to do is pray to God it passes and stare. I don't like this at all. This is this is darkness. gonna give me a panic attack. I don't like this because like the thought of this happening horrifies me like my organs failing and you just having to hope that ah, I don't like this at all you're just stuck here in the half world could try looking at other people really looking but why would you want to start doing that just get me out of here <laughs> get me back to the other place oh baby boy you're already in the other place. There's no nourishment for you tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe if you, you know, like, took a lot of drugs before you go to sleep, that'd do the trick. I'll try. Maybe. That's what I do in <laughs> dance, real life. Then you'd feel satisfied and tired, holding the picture puzzle in your hands, complete. And it's so funny, the different parts of your brain, like the primal just wants dopamine, just like, well, you know, you don't have to think about all these horrors of reality and existence. You could just smoke weed and watch a Total War Let's Play when you go to bed. You don't have to lay here silently and think about horrible riding away. Then Logic's like, yeah, but you have to wake up and that's not going to work, dude. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some... Oh, Greater no. awareness. Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts. You're just pretending that you're asleep, even to yourself, while the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. Yeah, that's not the part that scares me. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. That is the fucked up part, though, is like, even if you go, like, like just blinking out of existence, knowing that the world's going to just continue on without you, of course, because you're like a blip. There's seven like billion plus people. It's just like, well, uh, that's fine. But at the same time, if that is the case, why do I have to provide so much to simply just exist? Like, why am I spending so much money on rent and food and shit? Can I, can I at least coast a little bit? Put on your prettiest face for the messes. Get out of here. Open your eyes. Look at him, defeated as hell. Ooh. 
Oof. Gonna see if we can try this again. It's the next day. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. The skill point in. Nope, can't try it. Well, we made it to day three, so now we're able to do so much stuff. Or we're gonna call it here. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help boost engagement. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.